Hey there everyone, it's JC. It's common to spend all your energy on the holidays and fall into a creative slump for card making. In this video, I'll share my secrets to getting your mojo back and starting the new year off with some new sources of inspiration. And guess what? It's not by looking at other card projects. Keep watching to find the strange ways I get motivation. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have a Pinterest, and if you're a dedicated card maker, yours may be full of card designs. I actually did away with my card making board a few months ago and changed my Pinterest to recommend other things that inspire me. Some of these suggestions include interior design, tattoos, color palettes, scenes, plants, and of course the occasional food dish. Every once in a while, I'll stumble across something that captures my attention. Here are some dracaenas in some decorative pots, and this image sort of triggered a cascade of events for me. I thought about throwing pottery and the impression of the clay artist's fingers on the surface of the clay, speckled pottery, glazes, textures, and I wanted to incorporate that somehow into a card. I'm starting with my Altenew stamping mat because I'm going to use this textured gray cardstock to add some embossing paste. The stencil I'm using is the Bubble Wrap stencil. It's one of my favorites. Through this stencil, I'm using the Altenew embossing paste and jet black watercolor brush marker refill to give this texture paste a gray marbled appearance. I'm making a textured spotlight on the left two-thirds of my card front, and I don't mind that it's an uneven mix. I was pulling that handmade inspiration from clay artistry. Here is my finished background panel. I'll set this aside to dry and work on another textural element to this card. I have a scrap white panel of cardstock. Onto it, I'm adhering peach gold washi tape, and I want to take a circular spotlight of this panel. I'm using the largest circle from Half Tone Circles Nesting Die Set to cut out a circle. Then using the Angled Mosaic 3D Embossing Folder, I'll add another element of texture, this time something less circular to balance all the repeating dots you'll soon see on this card. I'll set this aside as well and work on the focal element to this card. I have the Postal Heroes stamp and die set here. I'll use the A2 watercolor loose sheets to stamp and watercolor two of the images on this stamp set. These papers are brilliant white and smooth so I get true colors and perfect inked impressions. As for watercoloring these images, I'm no expert in clay glazes, but I was thinking of a patina copper palette to paint this mailbox. So I'm trying to show my brush strokes and not blend my colors. And then for the stack of envelopes, I'm making quick and deliberate strokes on the shadows and not taking the time to diffuse the color. Once both images are dry, I'll use the coordinating dies to cut out the images. To assemble this card, I'll start with my note card base. I trimmed down the gray textured panel to be 3 and 3 fourths by 5 inches and foam mounted it to combat some of the paper warping. On a scrap piece of white cardstock, I'll tape down a strip of the delicate polka dots washi tape. I'll use my paper trimmer to cut the strip and then rip the paper as if it was the washi tape itself. I like doing this for two reasons, so I have some stability for the tape that overhangs and doesn't have support, and it makes the tape look more like a deliberate embellishment. Here is that textured peach panel again with some embossed texture. Behind it, I'll put this scrap piece of ripped polka dot paper from the Rock Collection 6x6 paper pack. Then I'll foam mount the watercolor images from Postal Heroes and add a coordinating sentiment banner from the same stamp set. I finished this card with some heart enamel dots from the Rock Collection enamel dot set. You might be thinking this card has nothing to do with the inspiration photo from Pinterest. That is really the point. With practice, you might see an inspiring image. Then it will trigger ways to add elements to your card using techniques you already know and layer them. Now, Pinterest is great in a multitude of ways. My board is catered to me and my tastes. Of course, that's the addicting world of social media. 
But anyway, if online is not your realm for inspiration, you can look at painters. I'm talking about Michelangelo, Picasso, Frida Kahlo, Amy Sherald. I saw the lily pads and flowers in the goldfish pond stamp set and thought of Claude Monet's bridge over a pond of water lilies. What I drew from this classical impressionist painting is color vibrancy and deliberate short strokes. To start this card, I used whatever was left of the A2 panel I had from earlier to stamp a few of the images from Goldfish Pond stamp set. Now, the Monet painting was done with oil, so there's a lot of visual texture and pastel painting from it. In order to replicate that, I'm making the deliberate choice to use the watercolor pencils, since I get an almost paste-like consistency with the pencil, and lay down heavy strokes of color. I'm coloring outside of the lines and not blending the colors together while painting these images. There are times I want even more color intensity, so I'll dip the watercolor pencil into my cup of water and color the image from the hydrated pencil tip. What is more important to me besides the color intensity is also showing the movement of the brush strokes. In the goldfish image especially, I am more concerned about showing the color moving instead of staying within the lines. I'll use the coordinating goldfish pond dies to cut out the dry watercolor images and set them aside to work on my background. I have a panel of vellum and on it I'm tracing the largest circle from the previously mentioned half-tone circles nesting die set. I will use my Altenew Artist markers in sets A and B to add stripes of blue and some yellow within this traced circle. Again, I'm not blending these pen strokes. I decided to take this colored vellum panel a step further and use some isopropyl alcohol to move the color. I'm adding small splatters of alcohol and then immediately maneuvering the paper so that the ink lifts and moves on the vellum. The alcohol should dry quickly, and I'll use the circle die to cut out this abstract pond. Again, drawing from the Impressionism, I'm using this graphic brush strokes background stamp and stamping only the middle two-thirds of this background using the Cool Summer Night family of inks. I made a draft arrangement of all the elements to this card and planned the placement of my sentiment. I thought the good wishes portion of the sentiment strip on paint of flower carnations nestled really nicely into the lily pads, so I stamped that directly onto the graphic brush strokes background. I finished this card by using a liquid glue to adhere all the elements onto the vellum first in a diagonal arrangement. Then I applied glue behind the silhouettes of the watercolor elements so that the adhesive doesn't show through the vellum. And that finishes my watercolor scene inspired by Impressionist paintings. I really loved this contemporary take on classical elements. Sometimes ideas come in a whim, and I'm always prepared to take a picture of something that I'm eager to put on a card. Here's an example of a quite literal source of inspiration. I work in a hospital laboratory and in a sea of scrub uniforms. Seeing someone in business casual will usually catch your attention. I kindly asked the person wearing this if I could take a picture of their sweater because I loved the color palette and I could see it used beautifully on an Altenew floral card. I thought the layers of You Are Beautiful and Build a Flower Stargazer would beautifully showcase this warm navy yellow, white, gray, and wine color story. I used the Red Cosmos, Delectable Delights, and Tranquility Family of Inks, as well as Jet Black Dye Ink. With large solid layers like the two in my stamp positioning tool, I like to use my stamp conditioning eraser to ensure I get crisp ink impressions. You'll see it temporarily dulls the surface of the stamp so that the ink doesn't beat up on the surface. I'm using vanilla cream dye ink to partially ink up the solid layer and diffusing the ink with a small ink blending tool. 
It'll take a little bit more time to line up the detail layers since I'm only partially stamping some of the layers and so I'm losing the reference points indicated on the back of the stamp packaging. But I am taking my time to make sure it's perfect. I'm inking and stamping the next layer in Nimbus and then stamping the final layer in Dark Knight. I stamped the other flower details in Jet's black ink and took a look at the final flowers. I wasn't happy with the You Are Beautiful flower. I thought it was a little too yellow. So I took the coordinating simple coloring stencil and ink blended Dark Knight only around the edges of the flower just to take back some of the yellow. I returned the panel to my stamp positioning tool and inked up the leaves. I used Grapevine as my solid layer and Jet Black as the detail layer. Then I used the coordinating dies to cut out all the images. To assemble this card, I adhered a panel of warm gray cardstock onto my note card base and added some splatters with Jet Black ink spray. Then I used just the smile portion of the sentiment from Paints of Flower Anemone and stamped it in evening gray. Then I adhered the leaves and foam mounted the flowers onto the center of my card. That finishes my final card inspired by fabric print. As a side note, there is a Altenew Academy class all about using fashion as an inspiration for card making. If you've tuned into the Altenew Craft Your Life podcast, you'll know there is a significance of runway inspired cards to the making of the Altenew brand story. I like listening to the podcast while I'm at work to hear the crafty journey of some of the people behind the scenes at Altenew. Before you go check that out, make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. My Perfect Pairing series airs on the Altenew channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. I'm so excited to bring you more inspiration for year 2021. Thank you so much for watching this last video of the year, and I'm so excited to see you again very soon in my next Perfect Pairings episode. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching!